A scale is a series of notes arranged in order of pitch, spanning an octave. In some languages, the word for a musical scale is the same as the word for a ladder or stairs, and that's a good way of looking at it. It's really a series of steps. There are lots of different kinds of scales, but the most common one is the major scale. It's the perfect place to start if you want to get to grips with all that stuff about sharps and flats and key signatures too. To follow this video, you'll need to know about tones and semitones, and we'll take a quick look at that now, but you might find it useful to watch my video on the octave first, because that will show you the way the keyboard works and introduce a couple of other basic concepts. A simple understanding of the keyboard is a great way to visualise what's going on with notes and scales, because everything is literally laid out in black and white. Anyway, there are 12 notes in a single octave, and these little subdivisions are known as semitones. Moving between any two neighbouring pairs of notes means moving a semitone. A semitone is the smallest interval we normally use, and we'll be seeing some of them in use in a moment. The other important interval we're going to use is the tone, which is twice the size of a semitone. So, moving from any note to the note two piano keys away creates a tone. That might be between two black keys, or between two white keys, or in some cases between black and white keys. Let's take a closer look at the white keys. Here are the names of the notes. We use the first seven letters of the alphabet, and then, when we've gone up an octave, we simply start again. You'll notice that mostly, neighbouring pairs of white notes are a tone apart from each other. They have a black key in between them, so they will span two semitones, which is a tone. C to D, for example, is a tone. G to A is likewise a tone. Or D to E, for instance. But take a close look at what happens in a couple of places. Going from B to C, they're right next to each other with no black key in between. That interval, then, is just a semitone. There's another place where that happens, between E and F. So that's an important rule worth remembering. Notes with ordinary letter names are always a tone apart from their neighbours, except between B and C and E and F, which are a semitone apart. OK, we're ready to start to look at a major scale now. Starting from C, play the white keys up to the next C, and you'll have a major scale. It's as simple as that. Remember that bit about white keys not all being the same distance apart from each other? Well, let's take another look. There's a semitone between E and F, and between B and C. All the others are separated by a tone, so in fact the steps are like this. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, tone. Tone, semitone. Now take a listen to the scale and see if you can hear that some intervals are smaller. That sequence of intervals, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, is what makes a major scale. Unlike a ladder or a flight of stairs, then, the major scale has steps of different heights. Just to be clear, it's the sequence of intervals between the notes that creates the character of a scale, not so much the notes themselves. So we could start on any note, and, as long as we follow the tone-tone-semitone, tone-tone-tone-semitone tone, 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 sequence, we should get a major scale. Here's what happens if we start from G. We'll go up a tone to A, up another tone to B, 
and then a semitone up to C. So far, so good. Now a tone up to D. Another tone up to E. And then another tone. Hmm. If we go up to F, that's only a semitone. So we need to go further to this note. That also means that the final interval from here to here is a semitone, which is perfect. So altogether, we'll have this. To create the correct sequence of intervals starting from G, we needed to play this note here, which is a semitone higher than F. It's known as F sharp. That is to say, F raised a semitone. This means that the G major scale contains an F sharp. That's the key signature. Here's another example. Starting on F this time, let's keep to the same tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone sequence and see where that takes us. So, F to G is a tone. G to A is a tone. And now we need a semitone. So going up to B would be too far. We need to go up less than that, to this note. That's a B flat. A B that's lowered a semitone. If we play B flat, we'll go up a semitone from A. And that means we're all set to go up a tone from there to C. Now it's just white keys. C to D is a tone. D to E is a tone. And E to F is just a semitone. So that's perfect. All in all, then, the scale of F major contains a B-flat, so that's the key signature. Try this with any note. You can even start on a black key, of course, and whatever note you start on will give you a different key signature, a different number of sharps or flats, in fact. Try starting on a D, and you should find you need two sharps, for example. Or start on A flat, and you'll need a total of four flats. Just remember to follow the sequence tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Finally, how do we know whether these black keys are sharps or flats? They could be either. In the case of F sharp, that could also be called G flat. But there's a simple rule. In a scale, we like to have one of each letter name, and since the G major scale already has a G in it, the black key will be some kind of F. F sharp, in fact. When we looked at F major, that black key could have been called A sharp, except that we already have an A, and no other B, so that's going to be a variety of B. B flat. A sharp is the ordinary letter name raised a semitone, and a flat is the ordinary letter name lowered a semitone.